All right, welcome back. We're going to talk about a teaching uh, point here when it comes to lung ultrasound. If you haven't watched the uh, lung ultrasound lecture and being able to at least have to identify what you're looking at and uh, somewhat normals, uh, I would encourage you to do that. We're going to talk about a chest x-ray versus uh, lung ultrasound today in a particular case that uh, I've seen recently. So this is the lung, or I mean the chest x-ray that was seen on the initial slide there. And we can see prior sternotomy, maybe uh, close to being some uh, cardiomegaly, but mostly uh, we see that there's this um, loss of the diaphragm here. And, you know, they keyed in on this and they called this development of moderate right uh, plural and left, or moderate right pleural effusion and a small left pleural effusion. By basilar consolidation, uh, this may represent atelectasis and or pneumonia. So in this case, um, you know, they're calling that this is majority fluid, um, which is relevant because on the admission note, the admitting team said that if the patient had decompensation in their respiratory pattern or respiratory status, that they would perform a thoracentesis uh, to assist in that, uh, give some respiratory assistance or uh, resolution of that. So the problem is, is in a chest x-ray, consolidation in this area and or fluid um, has the same appearance, unfortunately, so it's hard to differentiate. Now, if they went forward to do an thoracentesis, hopefully it would be ultrasound guided and they would have realized there was no fluid to drain on this case. But I wanted to go through and show you the difference of not being able to differentiate that and what you need to do. Now, granted, maybe, um, uh, maybe it's just giving antibiotics to this person, which you would probably do in both cases of understanding uh, pleural effusion. Uh, unilateral and uh, pneumonia, but if the patient has decompensation, you don't want to take the time to plan a thoracentesis, find the ultra, you know, find the ultrasound, bring it in when there's no uh, pleural effusion, that there's no fluid that's compressing the lung and causing the problem here, which would be this case. So um, we're going to go ahead and take a look here. This is uh, the same video that's in the lung ultrasound lecture. Is what we see here is we have liver in this area. We have that nice uh, liver appearance that we always have. We have our spinal line coming down and then it disappears into the diaphragm and that's because the air is dispersing the ultrasound wave so you don't appreciate that here. And then up here above we have the lung. Now this is slightly different because this comes down, hits air immediately and so it gets a little bit of uh, different in the echogenicity than you see here. Here we see a little bit of a uh, mere artifact from the liver due to water uh, containing object hitting the air, the diaphragm and then bouncing back and forth and causing that mirror artifact that's explained in the physics lectures. So I want you to try to remember this here. This is what a normal looks like. Unfortunately I did not obtain videos on the, the next images. I just saved still images. But here's what we're going to see. So to orient ourselves, I'm going to go ahead and have the, the diaphragms there in red. So right here we have liver and here's our kidney. So if we look, that spinal line comes up and it doesn't disappear into the diaphragm like the other. That's because there's not air in this part. This is, this is consolidated lung. This is lung that's um, become you know, full of flu uh, so much fluid that it uh, takes on appearance of a solid organ. Um, it is in the process of becoming um, that hepatization that we talk about. Um, and so we see this junk going on here and we see that spinal line continue. So. I'm going to take that line off and let you see where that diaphragm is. It's, it's a little difficult to tell if you're not doing a live scan, but it is right there. And so this is consolidated lung. And as you look, there's no fluid here. There's no black anechoic space, so there's no fluid to drain in this patient. So here's an additional. We're going to have bring in the, the uh, diaphragm, which is right here. Here's our liver over in here. And then again, we have this junky consolidated lung right here. So take that off and you can appreciate the spinal line comes and then it disappears right there. So back to the normal again. I want to give you a chance to take a look at that one more time just so you can appreciate it as we take a, a look at the uh, last couple of images here. So once again, we're back to that same image we uh, saw or similar. Here's our diaphragm coming through here. Here's a rib shadow. So it's kind of obscuring it, making it not as obvious. But this is our echogenicity of the, of the liver. And then we've got different solid appearing lung here. Still no anechoic line here, right? This is shadowing from the rib, but there's no anechoic line to represent fluid in this case. 
And again, right here we come along, here's our spinal line, it's gonna disappear into the diaphragm, and then right here, uh, medial, you can see consolidated lung again. So we see that. So in four separate views, we were trying to fan through this, get better views. Not once do we see any anechoic fluid. This is clearly consolidated lung. And so when we go back to um, our chest x-ray here, you know, this is not free fluid. This is not fluid um, that we are going to be concerned about draining. So if they have decompensation, we're not looking to take off some of that fluid to help that respiratory status. We need to be considering other, other modes of supporting the respiratory pattern, whether it's positive pressure ventilation, whatever it may be, but it is definitely not to um, just take off fluid because there's none, none that exists there. And as far as the small uh, left pleural effusion that they called, it was not there either. Um, so I just thought this was an interesting case to be able to look at a chest x-ray that shows some pathology and then understand that the limitations that exist within chest x-ray Obviously, ultrasound still has some limitations. If the pathology is not in contact with the, uh, the um, pleural line borders, you're not going to be able to see it. But it definitely has some more sensitivities, can definitely differentiate better what is a pleural fusion and consolidation, much more than a chest x-ray. So I hope that's helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to let me know. But uh, there's some definitely some good cases that we've done recently on uh, lung pathology or causes of uh, shortness of breath, and I hope that you find those useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.